Now, have you ever wondered what happens to a car or a van when it gets misfueled, when it gets filled up with the wrong fuel and then ran until it cuts out? Now, in today's video, we're gonna find out because I've just gone out and bought a Volkswagen transporter van. It's six months old, it's done 3,000 miles, but someone has filled it full of petrol. Oh, saw that. Oh, all them fumes. That's a lovely petrol smell, which would be great if this was a petrol van. But as we can quite clearly see, there's loads of indicators, diesel, 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 and very much diesel. So yeah, this van is a non-runner. I haven't touched it since I picked it up <laughs> a month ago or so now, and we're gonna find out how we're gonna fix it and get it running. Is it gonna be a simple case of replace the fuel filter, drain the tank and put some diesel in it, or worst case scenario, possibly replace the whole fuel system, which can get very expensive. Hopefully it's the former, and that is the first thing we're gonna do. But as I say, this is a 72 plate. It's done about 3000 miles and the side door's locked. Right, let's connect the battery up because it has no battery. This was like this when I got it. So this is the first time I'm doing this and I don't know if that's actually gonna do anything anyway. Let's just go around. Have we got any lights? No! Right, I need to get a jump pack. So I picked up the transporter from a salvage auction. Uh, it was a non-runner, but it did say in the description, miss fuel so i was like how bad can it be miss fuels don't usually make an engine go bang so fingers crossed it'll be quite an easy and a cheap fix and i've always wanted a van two reasons one because they're bloody useful and number two if you've been watching the tvr and i know there's so many people who have been asking for an update on the tvr the van will play into this and you're going to want to watch to the end We have power. All right, and there we go. Right, and then, oh, there we go. So 3,600 miles, and we've got half a tank of fuel. So now after seeing I've got half a tank of fuel and obviously smelling the obvious petrol fumes coming out of the fuel flap, I'm now pretty confident that no one's tried to drain the fuel, put diesel in, and try and run it up. So I'm optimistic now that this could be a simple fix. Still obviously can go south, but we'll find out together. And it should be nice and clean in there. And there we go, look, been plied out. And uh, I think it's barely been used. Still smells of nice, fresh wood. So with the van up in the air, we can have a quick look under it and I'm surprised how rusty it is. Look, for a six month old van, it is so rusty. Honestly, the materials these days used can just cannot handle road salt or any or the British roads in general. But we're under here for the fuel tank and that is our first, put, oh, bloody, a bit of damage here as well. Where have they been driving? It's ridiculous. So that could have been fault lift actually. Could have been a fault lift. Um, right, the first thing we need to do is obviously get to this fuel tank and she is a beast of a fuel tank. Look at the size of it. Um, fingers crossed we're gonna be able to drain this in situ. Worst case, we're gonna have to take it off of the van completely to drain it. Um, having a look under this under tray here, look, we can see some connections in there. So first thing we have to do is just drop these under trays down and just see what kind of access and see what kind of drain we can get going on. So luckily the fuel tank isn't covered by many trims. Uh, it's just one long trim and the one main one covering the Ablu tank. So around about 15 screws in total to drop all that down. Um, and yeah, it's a bit difficult to try and get the one off the Ablu tank, but eventually with a bit of jiggery, it did come off. Now, I wonder if insurance companies would cover you misfueling your car because you've kind of bought it on yourself. I'm not too sure, but one thing you can do is give Adrian Flux a call, maybe to find out. And also while you're there, you can get a quote on a new car or maybe change your existing policy too. Now, Adrian Flux have kindly sponsored today's video. They are a massive team of experts that always like to give you their best quote over the phone. And they're also still giving away a completely free PlayStation 5 with Gran Turismo. The link is in my description. You can enter the competition completely for free and one of you will be in the chance of winning it. All you gotta do, click the link in the description, go over to my landing page, enter your details, job done. 
Big thanks to Adrian Flux for sponsoring today's video. Oh, and there's only one week left to enter the competition. And with the under trims removed, it has revealed our two tanks. Now we don't want to get these mixed up because one will be add blue and one will be fuel tank. Um, annoyingly, the add blue one looks really easy to get to at the bottom, unlike our diesel one here. Look, uh, it looks quite big for an add blue tank. It looks about 40 odd liters and the diesel fuel tank looks massive. It looks like a hundred liter fuel tank. Frustratingly though, I cannot see any obvious signs of pipes going into this tank, meaning we are going to probably have to drop the whole thing to get it a good, give it a good clean out and also remove any uh, petrol from the in-tank pump as well. So it's probably not the end of the world we're going to drop it. It is quite simple to do. It's just held on with these two clamps here. Look, 13 mil bolts up there, one on each. So there's probably six 13 mil bolts. The whole thing will drop down and we just need to remove any uh, electrical connectors and also any fuel pipes going in too. So I got my trolley jack and I got a long piece of wood just to support the fuel tank as best I could and then just started undoing the straps. There's only six of them, but I quickly found out, see, we need to remove the fuel for the neck. It isn't a separate part, it is a one piece, but we can see, look, we got the add blue fuel nozzle in the way too and that was a pain in the ass. so I had to disconnect that, get covered in urea in our blue and eventually I found out I had to completely remove the fuel nozzle for the add blue thing which was a pain just so I could get the fuel tank nozzle out of the hole but once we did that I got it all out and it started dropping down fine until Well, that wasn't ideal. Cheers, wood. So yeah, that was a bit of a pain in the ass. Ended up having to disconnect the add blue fill up spout thing, which is down there. There was no way I could get the, uh, the nozzle for the diesel tank out without having to remove that. And subsequently I got urea, add blue, all over me, all down my front, all over my arm, my watch and everything, so that's great. But we have got the tank out and it, as you just saw at the end there, it did just fall off at the end. Luckily, it's only half a tank, so it wasn't too heavy. I managed to nurse it down onto the ground. Uh, and that exposes what we have here. So we have our in-tank fuel pump here, and we've got our lines and our electrical connector, which then just attach to the side of the Ablu tank there. So what we're gonna do now is just disconnect the, these lines, remove the in-tank fuel pump, drain all that off, uh, then go outside, find, I might actually pump, I've got, I've got a pump, I think. Pump the fuel out into a container, um, and then just clean the inside of the tank, as much, get as much out as we can, uh, and then we're gonna put it back empty because I'm not filling up with diesel and trying to refit that. Put it back empty. And once we've got the fuel tank back into position, before I actually connect up the fuel lines to the tank, I just wanna bring it back down, disconnect the fuel lines from the fuel, uh, fuel filter and see if I can blow any residual petrol out of the lines. I don't, it might have some one-way valves on it, I don't know, so it might not work. If it doesn't work, no biggie, we'll just have to fill the tank up with fuel and also we'll just have to recycle the ignition a few times just to pump through anything else, just to make sure there's just diesel coming into the new fuel filter. Okay. Oh dear. Right. This is gonna, there's a special tool for this, Ooh, spider, which I don't have. There's the pump, which is full of petrol. So that is the tank now completely empty. Around about combined between the two cans, it's about 30, 35 litres of petrol in there, which is about right for half a tank, I guess. Um, our in tank pump has been completely cleaned out. I pushed, I used the airline to blow fuel out the lines, pull fuel out the lines. I did the same with those lines as well. There is no petrol in there at all or in the lines, and I've got as well, I had it upside down. I've got all the dregs out from this bit here. There's no petrol in there as well. I mean, there's gonna be your residuals on the side a little bit, but there's nothing we can really do about that. So once we fill it up with diesel, that will be fine. So now we're gonna put all the, the pump tank back in, seal it all back up, put the tank back in position. We're gonna leave the lines off 
here, uh, no, where they connect near the air blue tank. We're gonna leave those off for the moment and then we're gonna bring the van back down and concentrate around the fuel filter area. There you go. I'm glad I left the lines off the tank because I'm plugging that. I don't know if you heard it, but I heard all the fuel just come out the line. Gravity fell out the line and onto the floor. Let's do the same with this one. This was going to be a nice and easy uh, fuel foot change, but again, I've unbolted the hair tank and it's solid because there's just loads of other pipes holding it in position, so this is a bit annoying. Just move it round a little bit more, come on. Right, fuel filter off. And here's our old fuel filter full of petrol. So we'll just leave that draining there. And we can unbox our new 60 pound genuine filter in here somewhere there she be beautiful so literally just going to stick that when i've got two hands in that hole there i've also removed the fuel lines that go to the high pressure fuel pump and just sucked all the fuel out of those as well there's nothing in there now in an ideal world i'd probably crack off the injectors just to get any uh fuel out of the, like the high pressure side but because of the charge coolers in the way i don't want to start messing around with that so I think it's just gonna be a case of, I've done what I can now. I'm gonna put everything back together, get the fuel filter obviously filled with diesel, uh, go and get some fuel from the fuel station, put like 20-ish 20, 20 litres in the tank, get it cycling through, and I think I'm just gonna just be a case of just turning it over until the injector gets rid of all the petrol and then starts pulling through diesel. So that is the plan and hopefully it works. I mean, I haven't even turned this engine over yet, so there could be something else wrong with it completely. Fingers crossed though, obviously there isn't. Now, before I completely forget and end up pouring diesel all over the floor, I'm gonna plug these two back in. If I can do it one-handed, that would be great. Can I do it one-handed? I can do it one-handed, but I completely managed to miss filming it all. And there we have 20 liters of our finest diesel. So now we've got 20 litres of fuel in the van. The only thing to do now is to turn the ignition on and hope that the fuel pump will then start filling up the fuel filter and get uh, all the air out of the system. However, I don't know if the fuel system has been disabled somehow because this fuse box down here, the flap for it, was hanging down like that and there's fuses in there. I couldn't see any missing, but... I think the battery is flat. Okay, take two. All right, let's have another go. I can't hear a fuel pump going, I'm not gonna lie. Hmm. Do I just try and crack off this fuel filter to see if there's any fuel coming up? No, look, nothing with the ignition on. That one goes to, that one's from the tank. Okay, that's not good. So we need to find out what's been disabled. Right, after wasting about half an hour trying to find fuse diagrams or anything, T6.1, there is nothing online about fuse box location, fuse box wiring diagrams, there is absolutely nothing. So God knows how anyone's gonna do anything if they blow any fuses, but I couldn't find anything. Um, and what I did find was just these fuses here. There's not many of them. There's not really many fuses on this at all. There's a few in the engine bay. There are none missing that I can see. There's none blown that I can see. 
Um, so it kind of got me thinking, well, maybe this is one of these stupid things that the fuel pump doesn't prime. I know with cars, they sometimes prime like when you open the door or turn the ignition on, but maybe this is one of these diesels that just doesn't prime at all and until you crank the engine over. So I thought I'll just give it a quick go just to rule it out. And lo and behold, if I just turn the ignition on, now see if you can hear it, because it sounds, you can hear it down to my, but if I turn the key slightly, now the battery's knackered, I'm fully aware of that. But before it clicked, did you hear the fuel pump prime? I'll just try it again. See if you can just hear it. There. Don't know if you can pick that up on camera, but it does prime just before it tries to then turn over. Um, so that's good. That means we haven't got a fuel problem, so I can now forget about fuses. Um, and also, I went over to the fuel filter. I just pulled off the um, fuel filter housing, and yeah, there is now fuel there. So that is good. So I'm going to continue doing that a few more times just to get the fuel priming. It's kind of good that the battery's knackered because it's pumping the fuel through the, into the filter housing without actually turning the engine over. So I'm going to do that a fair few more times, get the fuel of fill of fuel, and then I'm probably just going to go buy a new battery because... I've had this on charge a few hours now and it's, as you can see, still doing absolutely nothing. Right, battery fitted, moment of truth. We're just gonna crank her over. We've replaced all the fuel up to the high pressure fuel pump. So as soon as we start cranking, uh, the high pressure fuel pump should get diesel in it straight away and then we've just got to push the petrol out the injectors if there's any left remaining and then she should fire up. So um, if all going well then a couple of, no, a couple of minutes maybe of trying to turn it over, I'm not 100% sure but um, before I changed the battery I did just prime the fuel pump uh, with the flat battery probably about 10 to 15 times so let's give it a go. Come on, girl. <laughs> oh, bit lumpy. Go on, get the petrol out. Oh, she's a lit. She's a bit lumpy. Go on, get the petrol out. I hope it's not permanently lumpy. Come on, come on, come on. Please be okay. Come on, come on. It's not good. It's lumpy. Come on, pull through. Oh, come on. Yes, ha <laughs> she's pulled through. She's running a little bit lumpy there for about 20 seconds, but that was just, I hope the petrol just purging itself from the system. It does now seem to be running. I got it going quicker than I thought. I didn't think it would be that quick. I thought it'd be a bit longer than that, but seems to be running. No issues. Sounds good now. Sounds like a normal van. Fingers crossed that was all it was. Come on. I did just finish fitting those trims underneath. I think my camera died, so you may not have caught it all, but we are gonna drive this thing out. We are gonna be push in, drive out. Is it gonna start first time? That is the question. <laughs> Never in doubt. All my warning lights have gone off the dash as well. I did left to right on the old steering wheel and that calibrated the sensors, so we got no warning lights at all. And lights on, and let's go for a little drive. I'm kind of massively assuming there's nothing else wrong with this. Everything else looks good. I did just see on the back of the key as well. Yeah, rental at sixth car rental. So that explains everything, car and van. Yeah, we're good. We've got drive. Let's just go. Let's 
scared the crap out of me. It's uncalled for. We're good. Let's go for a little drive. She's a beaut. Seems to be running good. Apologies if you can't see me. I can't see me very well in the old GoPro, but if you can't see me, you just have to listen. So I think we're all good now. Everything seems to be good. Just gonna basic set my windows. Beautiful. Do the, oh no, the other one will be done. So there's no other warnings on the dash. It now is driving, it sounds great. Oh my God, I've just pulled out. Right. Sounds good. Pulls really nice. Feels quite nippy actually. Drives really nice. I don't think we're gonna have any other problems with this. Fingers crossed. <clears throat> so I like these little one-off videos. It's kind of just a break from the norm sometimes. And they're interesting because it's something I haven't done before. Haven't done a misfield before. So I thought I'd give it a go and obviously pray for the best that it is just a misfield and nothing else. And it's, yeah, it seems to be all good. Van seems to drive really nice. I guess from the insurance company's point of view, they probably thought it was easier just to get rid of it because they probably buy a hundred at a time and therefore probably get a 30, 40% discount on the vans anyway. So no doubt I probably paid for this with a misfi or what they probably bought it for brand new anyway. So I can see from that point of view, it's just easy to get rid of it. It didn't cost me much. It cost me a battery, which is, eh, might, might not have had to have bought a battery if they did it straight away. It's probably because it's been sat for so long. Um, but it's a 60 pound fuel filler and maybe six hours labor, doing everything, maybe a little bit more than six hours labor. But that's all it was. And we're up and running, we're all good. And the, the van drives sweet. <clears throat> now I'm not gonna raffle this. I still might do it at some point, but for now, as I said at the beginning of the video, I wanted to start transporting the TVR parts up to the Midlands to start getting restored. So the TVR can finally come back to the channel. It's kind of one of the reasons I haven't done it so far. It's just, there's just so much stuff and I don't have a van. I've now got a van so I can start transporting stuff up there. So I may then raffle this off after I've done with the TVR. I'll let you guys know. Um, but for now, there might be a Red Octavia VRS on Compete for Cars. So you might go grab a ticket for that instead if you want. But as always guys, thank you very much for watching. If you do enjoy these types of videos, please do subscribe. Also follow me on Instagram at saving underscore salvage. Go grab some tickets on the Skoda Octavia VRS. And uh, let me know what you thought of this video in the comment if you want to see more stuff like this or uh, an idea of, is there anything else you want me to do like one-off videos on? Any particular uh, um, niche, any particular fault? Just let me know and I'll have a go. Uh, so as always guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.